to the people that don't really know your history, you were part of the you know DJ screwed the DJ screws screwed up click. Right now, a lot of people don't know what that was like. You know, especially people out of Houston, and you know, and, I, and I'm not from Houston, so so I only got stories of it. But how important was DJ Screw at the height of his success? Man, DJ Screw was like. It was like a myth. That's like part of the reason why I'm like I am. You know, like when it comes to the fame, like you don't see me at every award show. I'm not a fame whore. Like like on my album, I say I want the money. I don't give a fuck about the fame. You know, I want to get the money and lay low. And being around DJ Screw was like being around a brother. He never acted high sedity. He never played the I'm DJ Screw, you should do this for me or type shit like that. And, and that's why I love him and was glad to be a part of it. But... I would watch this man go to car shows and press up literally like 10,000 to 15,000 tapes and he would sell out. I mean, like he used to have so much money, like we used to have to count it like four and five times. And just me seeing that and me seeing him stay humble and still go to the same places where he hang out and not be Hollywood, like it, it was crazy. It just, it just gave me that extra drive, you know, to do what I had to do, man. And it, it was just dope, man. It was dope. Because you always dreamed about doing your own screw tape and you always wondered what goes on at the screw house, you know what I mean? And when you finally get to experience it, and nine times out of ten, when you tell, like when you talk to screw, you be like, hey man, I'm ready to do my tape. You wouldn't even do it the night that you're supposed to do it. You would end up doing your tape on an accident night. Like it'll be a night like y'all end up going, like it was a spot called Cornbreads where we used to go shoot pool lead and stuff. And um, like we would go up there and you probably see him and we shoot some games of pool and then we would leave and go go to the screw house and go do some records and on some accident type shit and have some throw shit, man. So, you know, I'm honored to be a part of DJ Screw's legacy, you know. It's been 15 years since he's been gone and, you know, I appreciate everything he did for me, man. It was an honor. How did you actually end up joining the Screwed Up Click? Well, I, I've been I've been around Screw, man, since I was like 10. like nine, ten years old because I always hung around C Note and the Botany Boys. And um so between me doing battles, see I also used to freestyle battle, you know what I mean? Like we had this club called uh Stadium Bowl and Club Unique where I used to do battles and DJ Big Red and uh Wicked Cricket, you know. Matter of fact, y'all pray for Wicked Cricket, you know what I'm saying? But uh they used to let me battle and freestyle and I used to bump into them and you know, I remember meeting DJ Screw one night outside of Club Unique with his brother Al D, and Al D was telling him, like, yo, this little dude can freestyle, and I freestyle on the spot right then and there and about shit he had on, about shit I had on, and he was like, man, that's dope, bro. Keep doing your thing, man. And uh, he just saw me around, around, you know, being in Cloverland, coming to shows, coming to his house, and, you know, he just said, man, hey, man, I see you representing that Clover, too, with them Bonnie boys, man. You know, I want you in the click, and... He told me to come do a few tapes. So I actually did three screw tapes. One of them, I don't know what happened to it, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, we might find it, uh, who knows, man. But yeah, that's how it happened, man, being at the right place at the right time. You know, when people see you multiple times with multiple reputable people, like, they get comfortable with working with you, you know? So he saw me with all, you know, the big shots and the, the hustlers, the, you know, the same people from the streets. and. He was like, okay, yeah, he's official. He know all these guys, and so here we are. When you found out that the DJ Screw passed, like, how did you feel? That was a crazy day because I was leaving Southwest Wholesale. That, that's a distribution company that used to sell all our music, and I actually was picking up a check, and I left. And what's so crazy, for some reason, I had pulled my phone out of my pocket, and it was, like, on his number, right, like, just to call him. Or whatever. So I, you know, I took it off my screen. As soon as I took it off my screen, one of my homeboys' phone rung and we got the call. You know, they was like, "Yeah, screw died, man. He kicked the bucket." And and I, I heard them on speaker like, "Huh?" You know, I'm thinking this this shit's a joke. You know what I mean? And yeah, that was that was some crazy shit, man. Cause I pulled my phone out, bro, and I literally was like about to call his number on accident just cause of my pocket. Like out of all the numbers he could have pressed. So yeah, it was crazy, man. I was like shocked. I didn't believe it for the first, you know, couple of hours and shit, man. But yeah, that that was a, a a sad moment. Do they ever really determine the cause of death? 
because I mean everyone kind of assumed it was it was from the lean, but then I'd read articles saying that it was poor eating, it was other reasons and so forth. Like, do you know what happened? I actually don't. It, it's so many stories, you know what I mean. And and then the crazy stuff, the crazy stuff about it is like. Don't nobody know unless they really was there. You know what I mean? Because you know how people can change paperwork, doctor shit up to make it look good. So, you know, I think like a millennial, man, I don't believe everything anybody say no way. But nah, um, it's, it's, it's multiple stories out there, man. But I don't know the truth. I mean, do you think that it was from the lean use? Do I think? I, I think that helped. Yeah. I think that helped. Um, yeah. You know, I, I do. Weren't there other members in the screwed up clique that, that died from lean? Uh, Big Mo, Big Mo passed away. Um, yeah. Those are the only two, two members that, that passed from uh, coding related incidents. Okay. Yeah. But there, there was, but there has been a number of Houston rappers in general that have died from it. I mean, Pimp C allegedly died right. From, right. from codeine. Uh, was it Big Hawk? Yeah, Big Hawk, but it, it wasn't from, uh, Cody. It wasn't from Cody. Right. Okay, were there any other rappers that you could think of on top of your head? No, th those are the only, the only ones that, yeah, that's, you said it. I mean, how bad do you think that it gets in terms of people abusing it in Houston? Because it almost, it, it seems like it's tied so much to the music and the culture. You right. know what I'm saying? It ain't like, it ain't like a bunch of songs about cocaine out there. You know, right. I mean, there, there's a couple here and there, but in general, people don't play up cocaine. People don't play up heroin. Like, right. but people definitely play up codeine. Yeah, I mean, it's like drinking milk out there. You know, it's like that. That was the thing, man. And people, like back in the days, people used to overdo it. You know, like it, it was a thing to do to to pull up to the point where your your back hurting. You know, that that was the the shit. You know, like just pulling up, fighting to sleep. You know, but like they say, man, you got to do everything in moderation, you know what I'm saying? And the wise people, they wised up and decided to cut back and, you know, so to each his own. But, yeah, that shit got crazy. At one point, it was like crazy, crazy. But it's so expensive now. Yeah, you ain't going to see too many people pulling up no eight and no two liter, you know. We did an interview with Lil Herb from Chicago. And he said that, like I said, bro, I spent eighteen hundred dollars in one day. That ain't even down in the most I spent on some drink, probably. <laughs> What's the most you ever drank? You ever spent on lean? No telling, bro. Like I didn't. You don't I know remember? I didn't spent fifty thousand on this shit. Yeah, it's possible, man. When so so many different middle men get their hand on it, you know. Yeah, that shit can get expensive. No pressure, you know what I'm saying? I'm just having fun with it. You know what I mean? I'm having fun. Like, this is what I do. I really do this for real. So it's like, I know I make the type of music, you know, that could spread out to the world and I could be as massive, as big as an artist as, you know, the rest of the artists on Cash Money. It was unbelievable to me, but um, I know he messed it up a little bit when, once he said all the guns and stuff were fake and he never did shit like that. And he worked a job and he got his two parents, you know.